Welcome, everybody, to a very exciting episode of the Much Love Podcast. I'm thrilled today to have my guest, Jason Staller. Jason is an entrepreneur um, with Love Local Media, as well as... Love Local Home Partners. <laughs> Jason is a multifaceted man. The reason I brought him on today is because he's a creator just like me. I wanted to bring on a, an awesome guy to celebrate V2 of the podcast. We're going to be doing a lot more of these in person. So everybody at home, give a warm welcome to Jason. Thanks for being here. Ah, oh, it's awesome to be here, man. I love your setup. This is uh, it's really awesome, man, what you've done and what you've built. So thanks for having me. Thank you. It's it's a pleasure. Um, I know at some point we're going to geek out over podcasts because we're both in the space. We both make stuff and there's there's a camaraderie amongst people who make things. For sure. Um, but before I get into any of that, I want to know why local and specifically why love local? Building businesses around local uh, is what I learned throughout COVID. The media as a whole tells us stories about one another, but us as community members can talk to each other and can resonate with each other. And I think when we do that, that we could really find that we're not that different. We're better together. If we talk to our neighbors, if we go back to that love your neighbor vibe, that, that feel, and we just have our neighbors back, our communities look a better, like a better place. And, and that's I think why you're absolutely yeah. right about that, especially when it comes to the neighborly component. A lot of people, and I'll, I'll, you know, raise my hand and say, I'm one of these people don't really know their neighbors. It's like, mm. I know this couple, I know that couple, I know that couple, we wave. It's about it. There's something to that though. A neighbor uh, in a community of friends, it doesn't necessarily always have to be a neighbor's view, a community of friends with that love your neighbor vibe. And maybe it's your neighbors as well. Um, the world's like, world's a better place. Life is hard at times. So if you have your neighbors or you have your friends to be able to lean on, to be real with, we all, all the time we want to keep stuff inside, right? We don't want to let it out. We want to, we're, we're, there's shame. There's all those other things. But if we, Really, uh, if we just have each other's backs. We support each other, and we want to be in that community. Um, the world is a better place, and, you, and life is more joyful, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. I agree, and I, I think in both a business setting and in a life setting, um, the more you can do this, sit down with somebody, have a conversation, invite them into your home, yeah. get to know them on a deeper level, the, the better – at least I know I feel at the end of the day versus just my internet interactions. Mm -hmm. But that's why podcasting is so such a beautiful piece of art. And I think when we look back on this time, this is an art. <laughs> it's an art of conversation. You know, I, I built uh, it's Betty D's studio now uh, for for a few reasons. I wanted to uh, because of the reason of wanting to love local. Wanted to empower businesses, uh, local businesses and nonprofits to amplify their voice with content. Um, and Python podcasting was a great way to be able to do that uh, with how you could use long form and, and short form content. But it was deep down inside and the things I was working through that time, it was, tr and, and learning and seeing in the world was like, no, I want to build a business and a, and a, that helps connect people and that helps people have uh, and work out good conversations. I want the studio to be a place where you could come to and you could have a difference of opinion, but figure it out, <laughs> work it out, build a win-win, help each other, you know, understand each other's sides, but to be able to build that win-win. And I think with conversation, you can do that. And with podcasting, uh, you can do that, especially with the mediums that we have today. I love that mindset. I think that you said a lot there, but one thing that stood out was you wanted to help people. And especially mm -hmm. you wanted to help people locally and you wanted to help them get their message out. Yes. What's an example of a success story you've had and, and what did you personally enjoy out of that experience? First success story for me was that time frame um, and getting to meet these businesses that were struggling, going in there with a video camera, with a, a, another videographer and getting to know these people. And, and that's where I learned the love local stuff. Like we're not that different guys. Like, come on, we're, we're struggling right now. We're all getting punched in the teeth. Let's, Rap and help each other. Uh, so to me, that was that was a success story. That was like a foundational piece of my. I feel like my life of like how I want to live as I continue to go forward. I think the other one uh, was you know, we've we've helped a lot of nonprofits and businesses with podcasting and to be able to get their message out there. But the, one of the most recent ones that has launched are getting ready to launch and we're recording uh, to be able to build up a library is Pam Orr with Fellowship Housing. To be able to amplify a voice like that, 
um, it's, that is helping empower single moms to be able to build a new legacy. I'm like, that's why we built the studio. So when, I, when we think about success stories, people want to look at data, want to do these things. I'm like, how are we making an impact in our world? How are we helping it shape uh, to be a, a better place to live? Like, it's not always that bottom line. You know, it, it's there's there. Obviously, you have to eat, <laughs> but there's a balance there. But um, yeah, so for me, I think those are, are the two things that, you know, that's what I would, I would say. I love it. I mean, when I think of success stories, to me, it's a very personal measure of what is success for you. So when you come onto the show and it's like, oh, my brand is love local, in my mind, I'm going, okay, success is going to be who locally have you helped that, you know, you love their mission, you love what they're about. And it's not necessarily about the dollars and cents, but it, mm. it is about the impact. So I, I more than expected that kind of answer from you. Yeah, it's it's to me, it's not about the dollar cents. That's why I still got to sell real estate. But if we don't help each other, then we're not going to get to where we need to go, right? Um, and so I got I got to I got to do both. And, and at, at the end of the day, like what I originally set out to do is to put a media company in front of any business that I built. I didn't know I was going to have to build two. I didn't I didn't understand that. But I knew, you know, from a Gary Vee clip pretty early on, I was like, you put a media business in front of whatever you do you've done that here you know it's you're building your personal brand you're building the much love brand you're you're connecting the world to good conversation and things that you feel led to like that's frapping awesome we should all be doing that in our own way yeah. thank you no I, I appreciate that um as i've been thinking about how do i take this show to the next level how do i just elevate my craft um, it started with i wanted to go from primarily online to primarily in person. From what I've seen your content, it's been primarily in person, really mm -hmm. from the jump. What allowed you the space inside to make that happen and, and what's been the benefit of that? I really learned uh, uh, all this video stuff in the beginning of COVID through our church. Uh, through that piece, I learned that we could create <laughs> so uh, pretty easily with a few pieces of hard work uh, and cameras and some software. We took that and we decided like, hey, can we help businesses and nonprofits uh, get their voice out there with this piece, uh, with this style of content? And the answer was yes. So we have a couple of podcasts uh, underneath the brand. Uh, Love Local Chicago Land Podcast is the podcast that I run. And then uh, Brandworthy, where it's, uh, the Brandworthy show is, is, is connecting with local businesses and local community leaders. And that's that was originally me. I helped to get that brand off the ground. But I can't do it all. And I wanted to go where my heart was. And that was a love local Chicago land community piece. So uh, Aaron Bondi and Mike Mordino are running that piece. But it was uh, we wanted to build a place where we could give to people to answer your question and help the local community, but also to create ourselves to, to help the communities become a better place. I love that. And for the audience, if you haven't seen any of these episodes yet, if you haven't engaged with either podcast, there's two episodes I really recommend. The first is on more of the, the business platform, the brand worthy. Um, they interview my friend Patrick Paniato about SEO. And if you're in business or you're just curious to understand how that works, Patrick's an incredible guy to learn from. Um, and then the other one that you said, totally yeah. another one you sent me a couple uh, weeks ago was uh, a group of moms that started a, a nonprofit helping families um, with food insecurity during COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and good, good Neighbors Network. Yeah. <laughs> good Neighbors Network. I was enthralled with the story. Um, I'm going to post links to both of them. When I think of you, you've done really good business interviews. You've done really great community interviews. I want to step back from that for a second, though. There's a lot of people at home right now who are in positions they're not happy with. Either they've just survived a layoff, um, they're concerned about the economy. They're really not thrilled with what it is they do for work. As somebody who's pivoted from being somewhere you weren't happy with to now like a creative entrepreneur charting his own destiny, what kind of advice, feedback, or even just personal experience would you want to share with that person? I think first have faith. If you feel something that you feel like, hey, I'm not happy, figure out why you're not feeling happy and fix that. And it might be scary. There might be a jump, but... You got to work through that process, um, and, and and to me, I, I've gone through that process. I came from corporate America, and I, I didn't really understand my entrepreneurial spirits until 2017. But you got to have faith. You got to believe that it's going to work out. It's going to be really hard. Things are going to happen, and and, and and but I think to have that faith and and to understand that like things will work out if, if you if they bring you joy, find that spot 
and keep doing it. You know, maybe, maybe it's not the whole thing. Maybe it's just a small piece of your time. You have to work through that, but, but don't, don't not start. I love that. I think that is probably one of the best pieces of advice you can give because if you pay attention to what you're interested in and you follow that lead, that's where the magic happens. Yeah. Like I was, I was up until one thirty last night putting the final touches on this studio, even though I have proposals to send, I have like business to execute on, uh, but this is the thing that I'm finding the most energy from and it's pulling me in. So I think you telling other people uh, to focus on that's great. I, I think, I think people should lean into that. I think the society norms don't tell us to do that, but I think you, you said, it, you know, uh, in the prayer before you talked about like creators, like let us, uh, let us create for you, the creator. Like that's, that's a kind of a role. Like, yeah, we have jobs, we have to eat, but we all have a voice. We all have something to say. Um, our, all of our voices are unique. So figure out what your voice is and do you <laughs> and what brings you joy and get rid of the stuff that doesn't. I love that. And I, I think that one of the things that held me back a long time was not being sure how I wanted to use my voice. I didn't know what impact hmm. I wanted to have. I'm still figuring out how to make this the best thing it can be for the world. But eventually I realized that was just an excuse to not start. Yeah, that's it. And I think so much, I, I did that myself. I did that for like a four year period of going through that process. And, and then I got into it and, and it was hard. <laughs> and through that hardness, I learned and I grew, but I found that if you go through that stuff, but if you, if joy and happiness at the end of the day is what you're looking for, then you should do that. But why shouldn't you, and if you're not looking at that, I would ask like, why wouldn't you be looking at that in life? Like who cares about the money? Who cares about all this bigger stuff? Like we get 80 to hundred years on this earth. If we're lucky, if we're lucky, <laughs> if we're lucky. So like be happy. No, you're exactly right. And, um, so this chair I'm sitting in, just so you guys know, I didn't like give myself the great chair and him like the, the not so great chair. <laughs> um, my grandfather passed away December 1st hmm. and this was his chair. Um, and so like I just integrated his chair into my office and a big piece was hmm. not only was he a business mentor to me, but his spirit of how he did it. This aspect of his family always came first. He wanted to make sure that I was okay and I didn't just fall into, into working nonstop, but I was connected to what brought me love and passion. So I wanted to honor him by bringing this chair to what I do every day. And now I see the chair and, and yeah, he's, his spirit is wherever next is, um, but it, it just helps remind me of how do I want to be in the world, which is important. Wow, man. Yeah, I, we, uh, we didn't plan that part of the conversation. I got like tears in my eye right now. Uh, I... We have um, my. I have a chair in my office of my grandfather for a lot of the same reasons. Um, yeah, uh, a legacy. <laughs> um, yeah, it's super important. Um, and it goes back to like, fine. What finds you joy? Like your, your grandfather. I can see it in your eyes now. He had a huge impact on your life. You could tell the way I'm talking that, and I have that chair in my room. I have a. I have a. Uh, necklace of my grandfather's too so like we're going off on this tangent now but it's it's legacy it's creating something from what you've learned and what you've taken on to take that on to pass the next generation there's no better time in history to be able to do that my man like right like we could do this yes <laughs> so i don't know where you're going with that conversation but i had to throw it out there because it's it's beautiful the fact that you take um your history and what you've gone through and and what you've learned and you've You've instilled that and you brought that into your creative space. Like uh, your grandpa would uh, be proud. Thank you. I really appreciate that. It's funny how that came up. I don't know if you know Danny Miranda. He's a, mm. a podcaster who's gaining, gaining popularity very quickly. Um, but for all the right reasons, the, the clarity that he continues to gain as to why he's doing it, what he's trying to give to his guests and then give to the audience. Mm. It's very inspiring to me. And I just took his art of interviewing course. I'm going to be doing a review on it because I think a lot of people can benefit from it. But he just had an episode with the artist Mike Posner, and they got into some really deep waters, totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. 
And it just was a reminder that by being vulnerable, we create the space for vulnerability. Yeah. I had no clue about your story with your grandfather, but yeah. I, I feel 10 times closer to you. But this, we're super connected now. That's why I was like, Kevin, tears in my mind when you were saying, I'm like, that's, it's beautiful. Like we wouldn't, if we didn't have this conversation, we would never have known that type of connection. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. yeah. And that's, I think the thing that a lot of people who are famous only on the internet they just don't know. And I feel bad for We're them. all human. Yeah. Not that, and not like a not like me being judgmental or jealous, but especially growing up at the age I did, I grew up where our parents would send us outside and it's like, all right, come home, but you know, call us if you need something. Uh, you can use your Game Boy for like an hour today, you know, you can watch TV for an hour, but it wasn't like now where these kids are on the internet all day, their lives are judged by how they appear to everyone. We just got to be. And so I feel like there's this whole generation of creators who don't also have this physical space to be. So I, I do feel really blessed to have somebody like you just come over and, and share the space together. It's, it's what it's about. This is, you know, we've built what we've built, but this is inspiring because I feel like everybody should have a studio in their home because we all have a voice. We all have something to say. We might have to go back to that beginning piece. In my experience, you got to find that joy or that happiness in order to get to hear, all right, to, to be in that creative space, but we all have a gift. It's, it's sometimes the outside world just messes it up and, and it makes us go in another direction because of society norms. But true joy comes from like going after what, you know, it's on my shirt. Like not only be it's, it's, it's to play on words, but uh, be content or be content, but be content, be happy. We, life's short. <laughs> You're exactly right. And I, I love specifically that word and I'll tell you why. As an entrepreneur, I think we have to balance two modes of being that might seem completely paradoxical. The first mode of being is that I am never satisfied with complacent or good enough. Like I'm always working on the craft and I'm always mm -hmm. elevating myself for the pure benefit of, I know that on the other side of improvement means more impact. Yeah. And at the same exact time, I have to be content with where I'm at today and that to be enough because yeah. it's what it's what it is. And if I can't be content with what is now, I'm not going to be content with what is at some random point in life. All we really have is right now. That's it. it that a hundred percent. And so, and so many times in our, in our lives, and this is, I'm sharing this from my experience. I don't know if everybody could, can relate, but we're anxious about the future, right? We got this thing uh, that's in my pocket now called a cell phone. It's just going off all the time. If you don't turn off the notifications, we got tons of things coming at us. We got bills to pay. We got kids college to pay for. We got retirement to pay for. There's only all these things. Right. Um, but like, uh, yeah. I, I just go back to like, do what brings you joy. And, and that, that moment is the most powerful thing that you could get to. Like, and that's where you could get to like a true creation speed piece. And I'm, I'm saying it as a person who's struggling with that and I working through that. But when I get peace, when I get to slow down, when I get to feel that moment and I get to understand that, hey, okay, I got, I got, I got my work to do later, but I'm going to create here and I'm going to be able to build and uh, get a message out there that I feel is important and, and that, um, can help people possibly because it's helped me. <laughs> why not share? It goes back to the vulnerability piece that you were kind of saying earlier, but why not share it? Humility is huge. <laughs> do you have a strategy for how you work through that. And what I mean by that is you, you mentioned this conflict of like, there's a future I need to provide for, but I have this passion right now and I'm unsure how to get there. Like, what do you do to navigate that? Yeah. Um, for I'm working through it and, and, and I'm winning some days and I'm failing some days where I'm finding um, true improvement and growth is in writing um, in journaling, um, therapy helps work through all that stuff. And uh, people knock therapy. I think therapy is like the most healthiest thing you could do. Like figure out your thoughts. It goes back to the being happy. You may have to work through some stuff to get there, but don't, don't look at it as a sign of, of weakness, um, by any means. Yeah. No, I love that. I, so I see a therapist on average once a week. My wife sees a therapist once mm -hmm. a week, periods of our time. We see a couple's therapist and it really helps us grow. 
How did you get to therapy? Yeah, um, through struggle. (laughs) Uh, You know, I think I've I've never been not pro therapy. Um, I've always been, but to actually go was super hard. Um, There's an ego thing that you had to work through, a pride thing, whatever, right? Uh, But once I went, um, you know, I went through a local connection that I met in the local community and uh, an entrepreneur herself and uh, um, a bodybuilder. Just like uh, uh, you could tell, she has a disciplined mind. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I, I think when I went to therapy before I struggled because I didn't connect with that person because I didn't feel like that person, you know, uh, entrepreneurs are a different breed. Uh, we're a little crazy, right? So to find that person I could trust was huge, but how she's helped me, um, and I'll give her a shout out here, Amy Wilhelmy, um, on here. She's out of Algonquin, Illinois, but how she's helped me process things or like seeing limiting beliefs within myself that were like hidden in my subconscious that I didn't even know by being curious and asking questions and listening has helped help shape me. So I, I, I'm pro therapy and I love that. I love that you guys do couples therapy. I think that's um, wise. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, thank you. I think two things. One, another shout out to the Love Local uh, Chicagoland podcast, because I actually listened to that podcast with Amy. Nice. <laughs> and I, I love this, especially the segment on hot yoga. Like that's, that's my jam. Um, but the reason why we got into couples therapy was that, A, my wife wanted to do it and I support my wife. So if it's an experience she thinks can benefit us, great. Yeah. Um, but B, I had this feeling that us trying to solve our problems together was going to become me against her in some kind of way without that being the intention. We're on the same team. So having a couples therapist was now it's our team is experiencing some friction or some things we can't resolve ourselves. We need you, this outside perspective, to come in here and help guide us. Yeah. And it's been immensely valuable. Yeah, and you have that's beautiful, man. You have to be vulnerable. Each of you have to have that, and you have to have humility to be able to go there. But the fact that you could go there and take this outside source to to help make sure that you have this best relationship possible, like those are life goals, man. I feel like you don't. Who wants to get married twice, right, or three times, or four times? You know, I don't. I don't. I don't want to. Like I, I, you know, and and. I'm not perfect, <laughs> you know, either is she. So to have that type of space, uh, for that, yeah, I go back to it's wise, man. So kudos. Yeah. No, I love it. Um, so you're married, mm-hmm. you have kids. Yes. How has it been raising a family being this, you know, uh, leader among the household while also doing all of these entrepreneurial and artistic endeavors? What's, what's the support system like? How has it changed the dynamic? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm super grateful. Like, uh, my wife, uh, her dad was an entrepreneur. So I feel like she just knows there's a breed that of craziness of people that can't shut it off sometimes. So, um, uh, she is, she's a saint, I think when it comes to that. Um, and my mother-in-law, she's a huge support uh, to us and our family as well. Um, and then, uh, we have, we have our two kids. Um, and, uh, for me, um, yeah, they're, they're my everything and how, have they gone through this? You know, I think it's been challenging. <laughs> uh, and, and, and especially at times, especially as like, I didn't know I, I was starting out to build two businesses, man. Like I didn't, I didn't start out to do that. I was going to build like a, a small media company to run the real estate stuff. But once I saw the community stuff, I'm like, how can I not, how can I not do this? If, if I don't do it, then who will? And, and then, it, and, and if they don't, then, then or can or can we communicate and be more connected? So, um, yeah, I, I'm super grateful for for my wife, and uh, she's to me she's the one that keeps it all together. You know, we, we did some strength based leadership stuff, like working on each other and together stuff too. And when she saw my strength, she was like, "Oh, that's why I always had to tell you to take out the trash." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes," and now I understand why you're doing that. But keep doing that. That's like we we understand our strengths now. We stay in our lanes, and our family prospers. But to say that it's not challenging um <laughs> would be an understatement i mean every day is something new we have twins uh seven-year-olds that are just uh, uh tons of uh tons and tons of joy and you know i've um i mean we've gone against the grain with the entrepreneurial spirit it might look like i work all the time but i'm super intentional about the time that i get with them and we're working on ways to be even better for them um and i'm just following my wife's lead because she's reading books and she's learning and growing but it goes back to that legacy piece that we left earlier you know we, we were fortunate enough to leave 
you know, got what we got from our, our grandfathers and, and from other influences out there. I'm sure that we will find out in a different conversation, but, um, you know, uh, to instill, uh, you know, build a business is hard uh, to do things is hard, but it can't jeopardize the kids at the end of the day. So we, we have to be super intentional um, with it. But I think overall, um, she's still letting me ride and still letting me build. And I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful for that. But it comes with intentionality and understanding that challenges will come and that we have to talk through them. <laughs> I love that. Intentionality is one of my four core values. And I think a thing that when somebody has been in this nine to five corporate mode, they feel like they don't have enough time. Mm. They're they're like, okay, if I've got to be at work at nine, I've got to be up at six so I could start my routine and eat and take care of the kids and then the hour commute. And, and then by the time I'm home, it's six and then I got to prepare and now it's seven or eight and, and where is the time? And in many ways, they're absolutely right. But when you become an entrepreneur, you realize there's a lot of time wasted when you're on the clock for somebody else. So much. Yeah. So much, man. I think that's why I enjoy building things so much because I can structure my day how I want. I could go pick up my kids from school if I want. I could go get a workout in the middle of the day if I want. But, you know, I might be checking email at, at night and answering to somebody, you know, um, just because, of, you know, I'm shutting it off to go hang out with my kids for a little bit. But that's the beautiful part about, you know, entrepreneurship, I think. Um, that's It goes back to, like, if you're not experiencing joy, and especially in the corporate world, like, figure out why and then what would bring you joy and then what would it take for you to build that? <laughs> Absolutely. I think that if you're at home right now and you've made it this far, you've got really a, a great treasure trove of things you can do to start that process. Um, a thing that I'm just kind of curious about with you, because we've, we've talked about business, we've talked about creating, um, but when you strip away all of those titles and self-image, like, what are you just into? Like if you could wake up and be a kid again and do whatever you wanted today. Yeah, oh, that's a really crapping good question. I might steal that for down uh, down the road. Uh, you know, um, overall family time is huge for me. Uh, making sure that we're intentional with vacations. I think that's in this time with them around the house, playing catch, those types of things, um, ping pong. Um, th that that brings me joy and happiness, and and um, yeah, just seeing them grow and figure things out. Uh, I love that. Um, and I think cycling for me, um, is huge. Uh, it, it's, I need to do things for my mental health. So there's a competitive spirit. Like I need to sweat. I need to push cycling helps with that. Um, I go to, uh, uh powerhouse gym in Palatine. Um, it was a great local gym uh, to stay. It's, it's very much, I enjoy it, but it's also a mental thing as well. Um, I enjoy hiking, enjoy vacations with my family. Um, I enjoy traditions. <laughs> um, yeah. Christmas with the family, those types of things. But yeah, I think overall, was, uh, hanging out with my, my friends, I feel like I have you know, different levels of friends. Um, and um, I, uh, I'm super grateful for them. So just being able to to connect with real people and not to just be fake all the time, like <laughs> is, is uh, it, it, it's super healthy and it, and it, yeah, I think it helps round out everything else for me. Yeah. That's cool. I like the the reflection there because when i'm hearing what appeals to you it seems like things that get you in the moment maybe there's some challenge involved like the exercise um, there's the appreciation of the of the family and it sounds like you're very present with the kids and you realize the blessing of it. not every day i mean i struggle i'm not sitting here trying to back like i'm perfect i'm human right um but i try to be when i'm not like i'm like damn it like you know I, I get back to it you know um because it's important yeah uh, well, legacy, I mean, it all comes back to that legacy. If, if you were to project out into the future what you're hoping your legacy is, whether it's through content creation, raising family, like what, what's the goal of the, the way you want to be in the world? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a good question. Uh, I think for me, uh, a good father and husband first that cared and was passionate, uh, not only about making the world uh, or communities a better place. Um, I think, uh, but just about being a good dad and enjoying that part of my life and being a good husband, wanting to be a better husband, you know, like, man, we learn some stuff, don't we? Like <laughs> we think we're perfect as men and we're far from it uh, when, it, when it comes to our wives. So um, um, I think there, and then I think um, good family, man, I think overall with that, um, in overall, uh, in the community stuff, is somebody that had hope for the future. That us as community members, that if we talk and if that we create ourselves and we create content, that our 
communities could be a better place and a stronger place. And I help lead that charge uh, with with the media stuff that we're building uh, to be able to create a positive impact in our world. I feel like it starts local, and once we can fix it local, then we can take it on to, to federal and state and all those types of things. But we need to we need to we need to help our neighbors first. That's why you know Good Neighbors Network, like they're doing great things. Imagine more of more of us did that, the world would be a better place. I believe you a thousand percent. And I think the thing that appeals to me about the local mission is that change doesn't happen, in my opinion, effectively at a federal level. Mm -hmm. um, it's too big. It's way too big. And yeah. quite frankly, there's a very different... Way too much bureaucracy. <laughs> well, not yeah. only that, but even just if we take out politics and we take out the mechanism of how people hope change happens, and you just look at how different is Alaska from Florida, from Hawaii to New York. And then if you look within New York, how different is Manhattan versus upstate New York? And then you look at Manhattan and you go, all right, how different are the five boroughs of New York City? And you go, wow, the idea that one person like a president is going to come in here and just get everyone on the same page is incredibly unrealistic. But when you work with people who are making an impact boots on the ground within a community, I think we need more people who are doing what you're doing. Yeah, and I think that's the our, the goal originally for us was like, hey, we want to do this everywhere across the country. Two years into it, I'm like, yeah, no, this is good. <laughs> Being local is, is good because building the business is hard, right? And the time I have in my life when I want to do all those other things, like, I just want to do it local. But my hope, and other people are already doing it, but my hope is it continues to scale. I think that, that because of, of our phones and because of how social platforms are, our world has become really transparent recently. And there's a lot of propaganda and misinformation in there. However, if we could start making content for good, if we could start making content for change and for impact, and we could do that collectively from each of our own perspectives with the goal to be able to connect, to have a conversation, to be able to build a win-win it's the world is going to be better, man. Like, I don't know, like, how doesn't it not? Right. Like, so I, I think that's where, where a lot of it comes from. I love being on that vibrational plane. A question that I ask all of my guests that I'll, I'll bring to you as well. If you could meet anyone, who would it be and why? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Um, alive or dead or doesn't anyone. matter. You know, I, I, don't know who it would be. This is a really good question, but it would be, um, it would be somebody uh, previously, a, a previous generation that was a dreamer, a builder that was going against the grain, um, and, and with whatever that was, to have conversations around their stories and, and their struggles and their overcoming of things. Because I think when you're building something, it gets really hard and it gets uh, and, and, and difficult. It's difficult at times. Right. So if you, and especially like for me, like I'm like, I want to build a local media company for the local community. Like that sounds crazy. Right. So I, I want to talk to other crazy people to understand their struggles and learn from them and grow from them. Um, but I'm kind of ashamed. I don't know if I necessarily have that specific person, but I'm going to think about it now. Well, uh, I like that you don't have a specific person. You have an ethos of who that person is and what matters to them, because I think that's often more important. A lot of times we put people on pedestals and like you mentioned, Gary V. One of the things that I've loved about watching Gary V from afar was not the what of what he said, but studying the how of how he iterated and how he delivered a message. And a lot of people wanted to be like, Gary, tell me what to do. And it's like, hey, pay attention to how I'm doing this shit. Figure out your own why and make it work. The what yeah. will come. Yeah, that's it. And, and so many people, I've seen it over the last year, especially people are saying they want that, but they're not willing to put in that work to do that or what it would take to be able to do that. But yeah, I've been following Gary V very early on and the man is not wrong. <laughs> it, it, and so many people are pretty media companies in front of what they do. The ability, opportunity we have right now with, it, with all social platforms, but I, I'll look at YouTube specifically with how you can make long form content and short form content. The type of messages now that we could get out there as just regular Joes, if we make enough and we're good at it's good enough. It's, it, there's a, there's a balance in between it. That's an art, right? But if you do that and you follow what Facebook wants to be able to, to our Facebook, uh, YouTube wants you to do, like you could 
create, man, you can build a brand that stands withstands the test of time. Um, and, and to me that, you know, for me, I wanted to be, create an impact, but for somebody else, it might be to build a, a great financial business or to build, um, you know, a, a nonprofit that gives back to the community. Everybody's journey is different, you know, so, but, but to do it. So he's not wrong. I, I love Gary V. I, uh, I know he's over the top for some people, but that's just cause they don't get him Cause he, he's real. <laughs> well, not everybody is for everyone and that's okay. Like, I think that I rub 100%. people the wrong way sometimes when they don't understand where I'm coming from. And even in me experimenting with the YouTube algorithm, I've put out some content that people are getting really aggressive in my comments and, and almost like uh, attacking me. I like somebody was like, this is the problem with all you people on the left. And I'm like, do you know me? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't identify with the left or, or the right. Like, watch the whole episode and you would have even known that. Let's talk about what's human first and then let's decipher what's left or right. Um, because propaganda has, has divided us. And guys, this, look in the history books. It just divides us on purpose. Like, um, and and uh, I don't mean it in any way other than that's just what it is, man. Like, so let's stop. goes back to like, I would love to talk to that person because I know you. I wouldn't say I wouldn't call you left at all um, with that. And I think people think of that with me, too. And I'm like, no, man, I'm just I'm pro human. And I think and, but I'm also a business builder. So I want to create wealth. I want to create things that have impact. But let's do it from a human centric place of of creating it from uh, an equitable place where we could help uh we can help all of us win i go back to like let's uh, let's all help each other build win-wins that, that's right. possible you're totally right I and mean, the human-centric component i think is really what most people who get into the left right ideology are missing out on like i've never woken up and been like i agree with 24 things that that one person believes and that person is just going to be my go-to and I'm going to put on their jersey and wear their hat. And <laughs> no way. Go to their march. <laughs> Sounds horrible. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, there's so many unique things to how I feel. And I'm always evolving mm -hmm. and changing that there is a whole world of people out there who are just looking to put a label on you and put you into a bucket. Yeah, totally. And it's, we're all unique. We're, you know, um, there's a line in a song that was like, uh, but you're not the artist, you're the canvas. Like we're all unique in our own way. So to be able to get that out there, super important, man. Don't, 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 per, I, I can never put myself in a box. I've never been able to do that. So it, it politics is with that too. It's just like, it's all a game guys. Like I don't mean it disrespectfully. I mean, I know we need a system. I know we need all that to, to survive as a society, but I, I, I would really love truly for good conversations to happen and and for us to be able to build win-wins from both sides of our parties um, so that we can make our, our, our world a better place and our communities a better place, um, our country a better place. So we could actually talk and, and with a focus to build a win-win, not to stick to our side. It goes back to the local stuff we're talking about. We're just we're gonna be in a better spot, man. Like we're gonna be healthier, you know. Um, are you a Ray Dalio fan? Um, I have things I like about Ray Dalio, yeah. but again, to the point of me like not putting people on pedestals, I also vehemently disagree with him about certain things. Sure. But I think he has a net positive impact on the world. Yeah, for sure. And and, and I would agree with that. There was uh, with one thing that he wrote was about uh, there's like six stages of government. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, I don't remember all the stages. I remember one was like the time of overcoming and like um, we yeah, uh, overcoming it and coming out of something bad. He was saying, I read this like two years ago, we, we were like pretty much on the verge of civil war, which is the sixth step, which you see it already, you know, and I, we really took this tangent, a, a different or this podcast in a different spot, but you see it happening in our world. It might not look the same way, but this is flat out a civil war and propaganda is at the forefront of it uh, with how they could use it on social media and, and dividing us as a society. And um, that, that's my opinion. And I know people might disagree and, and that's okay. But the fact is, if it is at the end of the day, like if we don't figure out how to create win-wins with one another, whether it's the community level or whether it's the state level or federal level, it, life's going to suck for many of us. So, but why? <laughs> no, you're right. And I think, I think that where I tend to get turned off by some of those types of analysis of like when people just look at stages and cycles is it boils down to what has been is what will be. And while I'm a big fan of pattern recognition, I also think it's very simple of looking at like Machiavelli's writing. Do you want to lead from love or lead from fear? 
And when hmm. your government is based on leading from fear, it's always essential to find an enemy to make the person we're afraid of. And it's great for rallying people together. I mean, World War II was arguably the best thing that ever happened to the U.S. economy in terms of creating a military industrial complex. But was that the best thing for the world? Was that like, and now I'm a Jew, like it was very important that somebody went and stopped Hitler. But to look at it and take myself out of my own position, the constant needing an enemy, when we look around and it's like there's really no need for enemies to a large extent, we start making each other the enemy. And that, that's ultimately why I think civilizations collapse. But you just said it. If we leave with love, uh, great name for a podcast, by the way, much love. Uh, <laughs> if we leave with love, it's... It, it, it's just, it's a better way to do it, man. <laughs> this, this enemy stuff, this fighting stuff just causes stress, just causes anger, just causes all these unhealthy things where, where if we just led with love and built in with the goal of building win wins, we're good. I think that's a, a great place to end. There's so many other places I want to take this conversation. We took future. it to like the, <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, yeah. I think at some point I'd love to talk music with you. I'd love to talk culture. Um, but I want to be respectful of your time. Yeah, this sure. was great. Appreciate it. Um, what would you like the audience to do, if anything, from today? Um, you know, that's just what we ended on, guys. Uh, uh, two things. Uh, follow what's in your heart or in your gut, and it might be hard. Have faith in that. Believe with love. Don't, don't try to divide. Don't try to be um, – uh, just build win-wins, lead with love, and I promise you, not only are you going to have a more joyous place, but if that pay-it-forward mentality comes into a place, your society looks like a better place, too. Lead with love. And uh, with that, this has been a special episode of the Much Love Podcast. Jason, thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Much love, everybody. Peace.